So welcome to the farmhouse table. I like the farmhouse table. I sit at I it often. So you do. I You're like normally it. not like on this side of said farmhouse table. Mm -hmm. We're usually at the end in front of the hutch that we film Real Robert Dean Dad. Mm -hmm. The very unique hutch. Mm -hmm. So how's the If you want to angle? see that very unique hutch, you have to crawl on yeah. over to Real Robert Dean. You do. You have to go visit that. This you is, like this angle then? This is the other wall. It's, the other it's so side. cute, isn't it? So I want you to know there's a lot of cute walls just like this one in Kristen's house. She has, I don't know, you like, do you have to spend a lot of time arranging them on the floor before you hang them all up? I did this one sort of out on the floor a little bit, but I mean, I'm not like a measure and make sure everything's accurate kind of person, so we just throw this stuff You throw it up. Yeah. Well, it somehow looks great. I'm free of all that. <laughs> I'm just free of measuring, measuring and things like that. So we are here to talk about like silencing mm -hmm. the distractions, mm -hmm. um, especially sort of in a crazy time. So why don't you start by introducing yourself and telling these wonderful listeners and watchers all about you. Let's talk about you. It's really easy. Tell me all I'm good things. at that. Okay, my name is Mindy Shriver. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have five kids. That's like apparently how I, these days, that's the first sentence I say <laughs> all the time. Hi, my name is Mindy Shriver, I have five kids. It's just like robotically comes out. Been married 20 years, that's like a really big deal. Yeah, it is. I think. It's a really big deal in general. It is. Yeah. Um, I come from a really broken childhood. My mom was, sorry, my mom's married four times, my dad was married twice, and so um, endurance mm -hmm. in, within a marriage, and yeah. I was just reading about covenant this morning, and covenants before God, and that breaking them is really important to me. I don't know why I went off on that subject, but that's a part of me and um, part of my story. I used to be majorly into fitness and teaching fitness um, all throughout our com community and online, and I still love fitness, but I feel God calling me into new things. Mm -hmm. And what else? What else? What else do we need to know about you? Mm -hmm. um, so right now you are studying the book of Mark. I am. Which is great. I know. It's, it's so how rich. colorful it is. It's all marked up right here. It's really yeah. exciting when you look in your Bible and you realize, I just colored all of those words and I actually studied. And I actually did. <laughs> I actually studied it. Um, so I, what I want to do is kind of talk a little bit about just this kind of the season of life, not just for you, but gosh, I think that so many of us just feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many demands on us, you know, life just isn't what it used to be. Things are so different now. And even though that has its own benefits and, you know, I love technology and I love social media and um, just feel like it has a lot of positives, it also kind of feeds into kind of this anxiety and this crazy and this like constant distraction and so let's talk a little bit about some of the crazy of today's society today's america mm -hmm. well first of all i it's so different than when i think we grew up even though we mm -hmm. have what eight years between us even um we we explored we played we didn't have as many like strict timelines we got to use our imaginations more we had a lot more quietness we had we had family dinners a lot more um and I just see that I, I, I too love technology. I think the smartphone has revolutionized my life. It's my mm -hmm. camera, it's my alarm clock, it's my stereo. Yeah. I no longer have to do a, a cassette tape and like rewind and push play, you know, like it's always there on the playlist. It's revolutionized my life. And me, I'm actually a social media person. Yeah. So um, for those of us who even, a lot of us now run our businesses online and so we really, that's the best place to market. Yeah. And so when you're uh, when you're marketing your business and you're serious about a business, you'll you'll need to be online, and that can be also overwhelming. So when your phone is constantly dinging and your and you use your phone for an alarm clock, sometimes so it's the first thing you wake up in the morning. So you have this you have this like relationship with this computer that's this size, and and mm -hmm. you don't know what to do if it goes away. Yeah. Like the silence kills us. Right. It, it's, it's for a couple days, it's a little bit distracting. Um, it's distracting to have the silence. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. it's, it's nerve wracking. It's like, I don't even know what to do. Right. Shouldn't I be doing something? Uh -huh. Isn't there something that is supposed to be being done right now? At a stoplight. Do you guys ever just have, I'm so sorry. I'm confessing this. Go ahead. Live. Or, well, I guess we're not going to be live, but still. Right. 
at a stoplight, do you ever just be like, I, you, we can't even stop long enough at a stoplight. You'd be like, what's going on down there? Uh-huh. <laughs> right? Okay, I'm driving again. Right. At a stoplight even, we can't silence ourselves, and this is what I found myself doing. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a lot, and we're going to kind of dive into that even more later, but let's, let's get into the word mm -hmm. and see what the word has for us, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Hopefully. Okay, so yes, I was reading in Mark and yes. studying in the first few, the beginning of Mark, and it just hit me that, you know, you can read the Gospels a million times, and we have read the stories and heard the stories of Jesus healing and giving of himself and loving people and talking in the synagogues and debate, like debating with the priests and things like that. And there's this part that just in this time when I was going through this, mm -hmm. you know, going through all these distractions and feeling like the first thing I was doing was grabbing my phone and feeling like I was serving mm -hmm. my family so fiercely that I was tired and nobody was listening to me and no one was saying thank you and I was just feeling overwhelmed and then it was like ding, 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 ding all over the phone. And then Jesus says in Matthew, hey disciples, go over and get that boat mm -hmm. and like set it over by the lake. So that caught my attention. Because he's like by the lake and everyone, it just keeps saying several times over and over, the crowds were following him. Crowds were getting large, multitudes of people. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm feeling already anxiety during the time that I'm reading this and just reading the multitudes of people and the crowds of people and they were following him and they were intrigued and they were wondering what he was saying. I was like, that conveys the feeling that I've been feeling of just like da 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 and then later he says, he steps into the boat but continues talking. So he kind of sets a slight, like, he's, it's almost like when someone comes to your house and you're really exhausted <laughs> and you're like wanting to talk to them and wanting mm -hmm. to share with them but you're ready to go to bed so you kind of start itching your way towards the door, you yeah. know, and you're like kind of ready for them to leave yeah. and you're giving them a hint because not because necessarily you don't want to be with them but you're... Mm -hmm. Spent. Right. And I felt like he stepped into the boat and began, continued to talk to them, but he knew, like, it's time for me to rest. Right. Like, it, it's getting there, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then he says to the disciples, hey, let's go across. Like, let's get in the boat. Let's go across. And then, then you just read the next thing you read is that there's a storm and he's sleeping. It's kind of like, hello. I thought that, and so it spoke to me in a different way this time. It wasn't necessarily about the miracles that he was doing and the preaching that he was doing or the miracle of calming the storm. Mm -hmm. Because we focus on that section. Yeah. It was really about, he knew he needed a break because he's in a human body. He might be God, mm -hmm. you know, on earth, but he was in a human body. He might have been perfect, but it doesn't mean he probably didn't get exhausted. Right. You know, we also read in a couple of uh, the Gospels before that he had, he was tempted and, you know, he was in the wilderness and he did a lot of things in those three years. It just really spoke to me that he got in the boat after large, large crowds, large crowds, large crowds, lots of stimulation. Mm -hmm. And then he went to sleep and I had just been feeling like he was telling me, that God was telling me, hey, you can silence these storms. Yeah. You have the power and so just do it. And right then and there, as I wrote in the blog, like I just got on my phone, was like, delete, delete. And Kristen knows, like when we're filming and stuff, she's like, holy moly, Mindy, would you stop with all of the notifications? Yeah. Notification, notification, notification. It's always going off. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I mean, I just wasn't controlling that. Yeah. Because here's the thing, you already have, you have five children and a husband who runs a very large, successful business and um, you help him with that. You guys are partners in that and partners in life. And you're already like active and involved in your community. And so that already in itself is enough. Like that's already enough dinging of the phone and notifications and mom, I forgot that I need this thing by the end of the day. And can you get it to me? And it's just like already constant communication needing to go on to just run your family just for your own tribe. So then adding on top of that, you know, Dennis um, ha had a stroke and that was a big deal. So that was like on top of that. And then on top of that, adding in all of the communication of all of the social media and the email accounts and the subscribe accounts, like all the things. And after a while, it just gets to be too much because already your family is 
is a lot. It's, it's just a lot right now. <laughs> and so there are seasons where you do need to do that to survive mm -hmm. and to get out with your your mind and self intact. Um, so let's talk a little bit about just kind of that experience and what you um, kind of what you gained, uh, you know, over the last few weeks of how you how you deleted the stuff, how you decided what you needed to keep, and just like that experience of walking through that over the last few weeks. So ironically, after silencing all of those distractions of emails, things that we talked about, um, notifications, Pinterest, Instagram, all of it, um, and the extra apps you have on your phone that you just don't need. Right. My battery on my car broke down. And so we had to go in and get a new battery. Well, apparently when they change your battery, I don't know if they just shut your car off electronically, but they, they, I don't know what happened, but my, for the last two weeks, my radio hasn't even worked. Ooh. No amount of anything audio is working in my car right now. And it keeps giving me a notification to, to enter the code in. Well, I don't know the code and I don't know what to do. And I haven't taken time to call Honda, you know, and figure this out. But I thought that was interesting as I'm silencing the distractions. I also am driving around and I do a lot of driving around. Oh, you do. With complete silence. Yeah. It's been very strange. So what, what has happened to me is a lot of time talking to God, mm -hmm. even as I sit at a stoplight, even as I'm sitting at, um, dance, mm -hmm. waiting for dance or football. And, um, I've gotten through more of Mark. Mm -hmm. I've, um, finished a book. You know, like right. things that are feeding my soul, mm -hmm. making me feel feel better. Um, I'm listening to a lot of, I'm honestly listening to a lot of new Christian music lately, and I really love music. So, um, just little moments of silence. I, this is so, this might sound silly, but noticing a sunset because I'm not mm -hmm. here. Right. Yeah, doing the scroll. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I'm in a different life stage than you. I don't have teenagers. And so I'm, I have a middle schooler. So I'm just starting to do like the commuting of, you know, he has after school basketball, intramural basketball that he wants to stay for. And just kind of this, this new stuff. But I do have preschool, a preschooler that never actually stops talking. <laughs> I mean, he just never <laughs> stops talking. He talks my ear off. And so I find myself like by the time I've gotten through the three hour process of everybody getting to school because we start at 630 and the last one's at 915. And so by the time I'm, I'm pulling out of preschool, I literally just turn everything off. Mm -hmm. I've just learned like I got to have, and I'm an extrovert, so, but I have to like just take a minute and turn everything off for wherever the next place is that I'm going to go, which is usually like a coffee shop to sit and write. But it's so nice to just have quiet and we have to know where our boundaries are and what our body needs to be able to do what the next thing is mm -hmm. and to be able to kind of survive, you know, the day. Sometimes we just need some peace mm -hmm. and some quiet. So you did that through deleting apps mm -hmm. and spending some time in the word. Um, I have before done a phone free weekend and I know like you people on the other side are already like having a panic attack. Mindy's telling you to delete your apps. <laughs> I'm telling you to be done with your phone. But often I will challenge people, my readers, you guys, I'll challenge you to turn your phone off for the weekend. It's super easy. Um, my husband has a phone, so I text my people and she I does. say, she does do this. I'm taking the weekend off. If anything happens and you have an emergency, contact Adam, send up a smoke signal, um, <laughs> come over and visit. But Call I'm, me on an actual phone for right, your house. I don't exist anymore. Yeah, if you have one of those. <laughs> but it was so good for me, and I think maybe I'm getting close to like needing to do that again and just being with my people and you know having conversations reading a book, watching a sunset, you know, these things that we're, we're missing out. Mm -hmm. I feel like the generations before us, they got a piece of life that we're not getting. Mm -hmm. um, and Swinging on a porch swing and drinking yeah. lemonade with your neighbors. Yeah. And, um, I, I just have felt God sincerely saying to me, and it makes me actually get a little choked up, 
like I want to meet with you in the mm -hmm. little moments of the day yeah and we can be listen we can even be so intentional to get up in the morning and do our quiet times or at night or whatever but I feel and, and I do that like I sometimes it it even feels a little ritualistic you know because yeah. I make a point to do that but I feel like God has been saying to me I want to meet with you in the little moments of the day mm -hmm. and there's no little moments left in your day yeah oh that's so good that is such that's such good truth I, I love that and I think there's so much to be said for allowing pockets of time for him to do that and for us to see him because we don't allow ourselves to see him anymore in our lives and so I just love that I think that's so challenging for us not just like for you this is us preaching to ourselves yeah, as a reminder 100%. like we have to um, you know, this looks different for everybody, but that doesn't mean that you don't need to try. Yeah. So we want to encourage you to do this in your day. And so if you were going to give them some like, here's some tips, here's how to do what I did, or here's what this could look like, what would you say? How would you encourage them? Well, I have an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. I really just do. Yeah. And I can kind of go crazy and overboard with things. So. I I would say it was just like cold turkey. Yeah. Like I didn't say to myself, I'm only going to delete Pinterest right now. Yeah. I'm only going to delete Instagram because there's so many fillers, you know, there's so many other things. Um, and I also would say to you, maybe this isn't your thing. Sure. Maybe God's speaking to you about something else that's distracting you. I also used to be an insane scrapbooker mm -hmm. and I went crazy overboard with it and did it in all the day all the hours of the day and um you know i i also went through a phase where all i did was exercise yeah you know so it maybe it's not your thing but if you were considering doing this with social media or controlling your phone i would say go cold turkey and skim that bad boy down to the things you only need like texting or maybe your power school app for your kids grades um but i wouldn't mess around with it yeah that's yeah. my biggest tip and maybe it's a season I mean, maybe it's just the season of life that you're in and maybe, you know, that's between you and God. Yeah. And the great thing is, is that he leads us in his word. And if we're in relationship with him, then we know what mm -hmm. is our distraction. That almost becomes an idol. Yeah. Our kid, it can be our kids. It can even be something good like serving in our church. We can use that to distract us yes. from some stuff that we really need to deal with. So, um, you know, there are all kinds of distractions. But don't forget that we need to rest and we need to have quiet in our lives. Um, and that's the true challenge here. It's finding the places in your life where you need to maybe take some time away from it to rest in God and to spend time with the Lord and to have quiet because there's so much loudness going on in our lives and in our world that if we never have quiet, I think it's hard to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the biggest challenge is to to offer yourself some silence and and however whatever you need to do in order to make that happen that's what we we want you to do for a lot of us it's our phones um, but that's not going to be the same for everybody so spend some time with the Lord spend some time in the word um, get some quiet and see what he's leading to leading you to do um, and we'd love to hear about it. I would love to hear about it. You can find um, more from Mindy. I put some links in her post um, on the website, but you can find her at Mindy Shriver on Facebook. And then also your website, which is MindyShriver.com. So not too difficult. Um, Mindy does some speaking events and we do lots of stuff with Real Raw Redeemed. We'll both be at Imperfectly Brave Kansas City, November 3rd and 4th. We would more than love to have you join us there. Mindy's speaking, I'm speaking, um, leading worship. And so we'll both be around all weekend long. So we'd love to have you. You can follow us both at Real Raw Redeemed as well. Lots of choices, you guys, <laughs> lots of choices. Uh, but don't let us be your distraction. That's right. So get with the Lord this week. I know it's kind of ironic that we're sitting here talking to him about social media, but we I do know, social media ministries. Social media. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It doesn't mean that it can't become an idol. So it's true. Your okay. Bible is social media and watching YouTube videos and know about Christianity or this right. is never a substitute for this. We it's would true. always point you to this. Yes. So. Yes, this first. So, all right, y'all.
thanks for joining us here at the farmhouse table. Thank you so much, friend, for sitting with me. Just love it when my friends come to my table. So, bye, y'all.